Today I'm going to show you how to put baby back rigs in two and a half hours. Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life. My name's Tom. Today we're cooking baby back ribs on the Ninja wood fire. And as I said, we're going to do these in two hours. Let's jump straight in. So we've bought some baby back ribs from Morrison's. So these are cost about four pound a pack and they just need a little bit of tidying up on some of the ends. So on the backs, we've just got some little scruffy bits on the ends. We're just going to trim those up. I'm not too worried about squaring things off and things like that. I want to get as much meat off of these as possible. But if you've got anything that's hanging off, then it's good to just look, zap that straight off of there and then you're not going to end up with any really crispy pieces towards the end. And the other thing that we need to do is we need to take the membrane off. So I always take the membrane off because then it lets me get rub on both sides of the meat. If you're not too fussed about getting the rub on the back side of the meat and you like a bit more of a crunch in your ribs on the bottom half, then you can leave the membrane on, but I always remove the membrane. It's not a texture I'm a fan of on the bottom. So we just take a spoon, so I've just got a little teaspoon, we use the handle end and wiggle it underneath the membrane get it in as far as you possibly can and then I'll raise that spoon up and it kind of cracks it off the back and then I can get my hands in underneath and work my way along either end so starting in the middle and then working my way out a lot of people tend to start on an end and then you have to grab a piece of kitchen towel and pull it I find the easiest way to do it is to start in the middle and then I can slide my hands in underneath and pull it out from either end and it's a lot quicker and I don't tend to need that paper towel either So once we've got them ready, next thing we're going to need to do is we need to go on with our binders. So we're going to do two different types of ribs today. We're going to do a spicy rib that is going to be falling off the bone and we're going to do a standard barbecue rib that is going to be bite through tender. So with our standard barbecue ones, what we're going to do is we're going to get some mustard on there as a binder. So I'm just using a yellow mustard, so you can use Frenchies, something like that. I oh, like the mustard that you get from Ikea. It's a little bit stronger than what the French's mustard is, but it's not your full English mustard sort of flavour. And that meets me in the middle really nice because I'm not an English mustard sort of fan. So we're going to get that all over the front and all over the back, get it nicely covered. And then we're going to be going on with our barbecue rub. So you can use any barbecue rub you want. Of course, I'm using my own umami oomph powder. If you don't know about that, then stick around and I'll be telling you about it in just a few moments time. So once we've got that on there, we give it a nice dusting front and back. And then as I say, we can do our chilli ones. So with our chilli ones, I'm going to use Sriracha as the binder. And it gives it a nice little bit of heat, just an undertone. So we're going to get that all the way over, front and back. We can go on with any rub you want. So if you, whatever barbecue rub you've used on your first set, you can use on your second set as well. So I'm going on with my Marmi oomph powder again. Get it nice and covered, get them in the fridge for at least half an hour to let that rub really start to penetrate in the top. And then we can get the Ninja wood fire set up. So pellet wise today, I've got some pellets from the uh, pellet man. So these do have another word in there, that word being ninja. He's not allowed to use that word anymore, but I bought these before he had that taken away. Um, that's Steve over at Dutchy Cooking. He has had some issues with Ninja as a brand. Um, if you're interested in finding out what they are, then I'll leave you a link to his website, uh, sorry, his channel underneath and you can go over and have a look but he sells pellets for the ninja that in my opinion are better than the ninja pellets so i tend to get a bit of a sticky residue from the ninja pellets and these work out really well so i've got a little sample packet of whiskey barrel and a little sample packet of charcoal so i'm just going 50 50 in the hopper and i've kind of layered them 
a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of whiskey, a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of whiskey, so that I get a nice even burn from them flavours through the, uh, the pellet hopper on the side. So now we need to get our temperature set, so we can turn it around to smoke. That automatically sets us for 120 degrees C, and that is what we want to be going for, and we're going to be setting the time for two hours. So get yourself all ignited so make sure that you turn that uh, smoke function on so I always turn it off and turn it back on again because it doesn't always kick in if you just turn yourself to the smoke function hit the start button and you'll see it comes up ignition on the screen and that is just warming up the pellet hopper and getting the grill ready to be the right temperature once that timer starts to click down you could put your ribs on as soon as you set that up but I always forget so once your timer starts, get, gets to the point it starts to count down, that's always when I put the ribs on and I then know exactly how long they've been in there coming up to the temperature. And these came off an hour and a half into the cook. So you can see that they've taken on a nice amount of colour from that smoke, but they are not tender at this point. So they are just really colourful, but they're going to be tough as old boots at this point. So we need to be taking these off and getting them wrapped. So with our barbecue one, we want to take them off and get them onto some tin foil. So we've got two layers of tin foil here and we're going to make up a 50-50 solution of apple cider vinegar and apple juice. So we just want to get that into a little glass, um, around a couple of hundred ml um, total, and that will do both of our sets of ribs. And then onto our tin foil, we can go on with some little pats of butter. Make sure that we put the ribs meat side down on top of that butter. You can add things like barbecue sauce and um, sriracha and things anything you want to flavor your meat so with our barbecue ones we are going on with barbecue sauce on top of that butter then the meat side down then our fluid and wrap it up and with our chili ones we're going on with some sriracha on that butter then we're going meat side down in with our 50 50 uh, solution to help braise them close everything up really tight get them back on the grill for 40 minutes during this 40 minutes we want to set it to bake so we turn our dial round to bake and we set it to 150 degrees C, pop them in and that is going to give you the optimum amount of tenderness. So it's been really easy so far, hour and a half, 40 minutes and uh, yeah it's super super easy. So after that 40 minutes we need to get our chilli ribs out of that foil we're going to leave our barbecue ribs in the foil for another 15 minutes and that's what's going to give us our falling off the bone with the chili ribs we need to get our glaze on there i'm using a sweet chili glaze on there today but we could have used sriracha just like we used at the beginning i think the sugar in the sweet chili gives us a deeper richer color than the glaze we're going to set that for 15 minutes and that'll be enough time for the glaze to set and for our barbecue ribs to nicely tenderize so after that 15 minutes you can see the colour has really built up on them uh, chilli ribs and our barbecue ribs we need to get them out of the foil, get them flipped over and we're going to glaze these with a barbecue sauce. You can use any barbecue sauce you want, I'm just using one I picked up while I was away on holiday. It's a really nice one from Huck's Diner over at Centre Parks. So we're going to get that nicely brushed on and then we need to get that set for another 15 minutes. If you wanted to be cooking these falling off the bone and non falling off the bone all I did was I loosely wrapped them back up in the tin foil that they had been braising in earlier on covered them over the top in a tea towel and that just lets them rest while these other ones are cooking after that 15 minutes they are completely cooked through and they will be falling off the bone so we don't have a taste test today because by the time I finished this it was getting quite late and it was quite noisy out in the gardens it is as it is now summer holidays so the taste tests are not going to be the easiest things to be doing but I can assure you that these are absolutely fantastic 
and they are done in two and a half hours. So if you like what we're doing here at Barbecue Life, then please do subscribe to the channel, make sure you like the video, and thank you very much for watching. Cheers.